Hey Paranormies, welcome to the light side of the paranormal. I'm Jenna. And I'm Alice. Tonight, I am going to be telling Alice and you guys a mystery never fully explained. Now- I'm so excited. <laughs> we are doing this via Zoom meeting, not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> but much appreciated that we have Zoom as our town is in a lockdown right now. So I am safe in my home and Alice is safe in her home. And now I get to tell you guys this really, really weird story. And Alice gets to be here too. It's important to mention that Jenna has not let on what this is regarding. Uh, I am completely going to be genuinely reacting to this story and my commentary will be on the fly. There is no script today. I hope that you like this very improvised, laid back style of video that we're trying out today. Improvised on your part. Oh, that true thing. Yes. Script. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Are you ready for this? Alice does not know this story. At least I haven't mentioned it to you. I'm really, really fingers crossed you don't know this story. I'm not going to give you the title of what it's called yet, because I think it will give away too much. I'll tell you it after. This is one of the weirdest paranormal cases I have heard yet. My brain doesn't really know what to do with this story. So this takes place, and I am reading a little bit here. This takes place in a place called Sandown in the Isle of Wight, and that is in UK. And okay. this is in May of 1973. There are no real names in this story to hide the identities of these people. The seven-year-old girl, her name is Faye, we'll call her Faye, and her unidentified male friend, about the same age, they were playing near a golf course near their home and exploring the nearby woods and hills as kids do. They heard a sound off in the distance that they explained sound similar to the wailing of an ambulance, but... Okay different enough that it piqued their interest and it was coming from deeper into the forest. Do we know if it was like an ongoing sound like an ambulance or if it was just one big whale and then it cut out? No, it was continual. Okay. Being curious children, they wanted to know where it was coming from so they followed the sound and it took them deeper into this forested kind of meadowy area. It brought them out to like a swampy clearing where this sound was the loudest and as soon as they got into this clearing it stopped completely uh -oh. <laughs> where they were at in this swampy area was adjacent to whether or not this has anything to do with what happened but adjacent to the old abandoned Sandown airport at the time so as they approached this clearing the sound mysteriously stopped instantaneously. So the kids being young and very curious weren't going to leave the area without checking it out and searching for what this could have been. And their search brought them to a wooden footbridge that they started to walk over. It went over this kind of creek. So this is when it gets freaky. <laughs> Yay. So without warning, a strange three-fingered hand wearing a blue glove came over the edge of the bridge and beckoned the kids to come closer. Whoa. <laughs> so both okay. kids, both kids were shocked and being more curious than scared, they didn't run in fear, but they actually approached the hand as it beckoned them closer. Don't approach the three-fingered <laughs> hand that beckons you. No offense to three-fingered people, but in this situation, <laughs> <laughs> probably not comes out from <laughs> under the bridge yeah, so it tells like, them come to come and they go and as they're going the hand grips the post of the bridge and pulls itself up onto the bridge it's a humanoid body so they're seeing this now mm -hmm. yep Oh my gosh, we're not getting a glimpse. Like this thing is coming up. Yes. Oh, okay. it pulled its eerie humanoid body up from under the bridge where the kids stood. The children described the figure as this, and this is a direct quote. Okay. You got to try and picture this in your head now, everybody. <laughs> he was nearly seven feet tall and had no neck for his head appeared to be wedged straight onto his shoulders. 
He wore a yellow pointed hat, which interlocked with a red collar of a tattered green tunic. A round black knob was affixed to the top of his hat and wooden antenna were attached to either side of his head. The face had triangular markings for eyes, a brown square of a nose, and motionless yellow lips. Other round markings were on his paper white cheeks and a fringe of red hair fell onto his forehead. Wooden slats protruded from his sleeves and from below his white trousers. The kids also noticed that the creature was bare feet, even though it wore gloves on its hand. It had bare paper white feet that also each contained three toes. What in the uh, ever loving heck <laughs> is that? I know. Anyway. Right? Why am I thinking that this is some type of like weird creepy clown? <laughs> like I'm just picturing a dead clown and a scarecrow had a baby and that's what this weird thing is. Yeah, it's it does give you kind of a bit first your first thought goes to clown. Yes. And so that's why I didn't want to give anything away. So this is called the case of the sand down clown, okay? I am brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> But it is really weird to note that the wooden features and stuff. So it gets a little bit more into that later on. Strange, right? Like this is, that's Extremely. like the weirdest thing. It's so weird. So I'll keep going. So at this point, the kids were watching in astonishment as the Sandown Clown, as it had been named, started fumbling with a book that it was carrying and it dropped it into the swampy water below and comically tried picking it back up, fumbling it as if its three fingered hands had never held a book before. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was very strange. And when it finally got a hold of the book, it leapt out of the creek in a way that it was described like if you were kind of to push a spring down and then spring up. Okay back out of the creek disappeared into a nearby windowless metallic hut and ah. as as it was going there it moved in a weird hopping knees up sort of manner i don't like the okay visual yeah of that weird, weird sit yeah no no mm -hmm. thank you the kids being kids stared at the hut for a couple of minutes and then when the creature didn't come back out decided all right well i guess this is it and they decided to leave the mind of a seven-year-old right like oh i guess yeah. the show's over <laughs> and that is why children experience so many more paranormal things aliens like all this stuff like because they don't try and make sense of what they're seeing yeah they just take just it like, for what well, it that is. was a weird thing exactly. here we go yeah, yeah. So as the kids were walking away, the figure came back out of the hut, gets weirder, <laughs> now carrying what looked like a microphone attached by a cord that seemed to be plugged into an amplifier. So I'm picturing, remember those little play school, like put the cassette in, press record, and now you're, right? Yes, I had so, my own radio talk show like so that So did I. <laughs> Didn't we all? So at this time, the ambulance-like wailing started up again. So it was thought to have been coming from this machine that he was now holding. Oh. So if you can picture now that a kid might say like ambulance sounds when, you know, when a microphone gets too close to the amplifier, how the it makes feedback. that. Rip. Exactly. Yeah. So at that time, the little boy decided that that was enough. It scared him. He started to run away and Faye was about to join him when that weird sound started to fade and went away. And suddenly with like complete clarity, the clown like entity spoke into the microphone and asked, are you still there? My thought now is like, can he see? Well, if he has those slits or slats or whatever you said for his eyes. No, he's got triangle markings for eyes. Oh, I don't the know wooden why I was... slats were, are coming out of oh. his sleeves, like a scarecrow. That's... Right, okay. He could be blind and he just had like eyeballs drawn on eyeballs. Yeah. Upon hearing the non-threatening tone of his voice, both kids decided there's nothing to fear. 
and they stopped running and they turned around and they started going back to this clown <laughs> okay okay at this point okay. the parents were like we need to teach these children about stranger danger <laughs> Honestly, though, I'm like, this is why I won't let my kid go to the park alone. Honestly, oh like, gosh. So now the being takes that book that it had had earlier and starts to write big childish words all over one of the pages in nonsensical order. Okay. It didn't, make, it didn't make a sentence. It was just writing random words. So the boy was hesitant at first, but Faye came closer so she could see what it was writing. And the clown now began to point at what words he wanted her to say and what words to say next spelling out a sentence so okay. it's like yeah he wanted to say something even though he could talk into that microphone thing he wanted to say something and he was he doesn't know sentence structure but he's pointing to the word what it ended up spelling out was hello and i am all colors sam okay so now it was him telling them his name was Sam and he was all colors, whatever that means. Although later he actually stated that he had no real name. Okay. Whatever that means. At this point, the young boy feels like it's safe to join Faye right up next near this thing and does. So they're all three of them right, right there. And they learn now that the being doesn't actually need the microphone to talk or the writing and pointing to talk. It can communicate normally. It can just speak like normal. Okay. Why? So then tell me now what the point of all of these theatrics was. Like that seems like a lot of work for like what? I would assume it adds to the clown persona. Oh, right. I like have you ever like out. seen a clown at a birthday party? And they do little things like that. So like could just be. Oh, I have theories, but I'll, I'll tell you them later. Yes, we're going to go over theories later. I literally have on my page, at this point, theories on this later. <gasps> <laughs> so Faye described how amazing it was that this being could speak. She was mesmerized at how it could speak without moving its mouth. <sighs> okay. Although she did say is his speech was a little off almost like he was having difficulty speaking without the use of his lips so if you pictured how how i might talk nice and clear like this but they can't move their lips that's so weird freaky right this is getting <laughs> more and more strange mm -hmm. Ugh. okay but tell me more because i want you're to hoping this will have an ending that makes sense I'll tell you right now, yeah. it, does, it does not. Okay. <laughs> Hence the being an, off. an unsolved mystery, right? Right, right, right. So, yeah. okay. So now the kids feel comfortable enough to start asking this thing some questions. Now that it can talk, yeah. they're having a little bit of a conversation. So the first thing that they ask, kids being kids, right? And looking at appearance first is, why are your clothes all ripped and tattered? To which he told them that those were the only clothes that he had available to him at the time. The next question they asked him was if he was a man and he laughed and said no. Being concerned and interested in the fact that his white skin was papery, they asked him if he was a ghost. His response was, well, not really, but I am in an odd sort of way. Like, what does that mean? But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so the follow-up question Faye asked to that was, what are you then? And his only reply without any further explanation of himself or who he was, was the creepy response of, you know. Uh, no, <laughs> no, we don't know. We are seven. We've never met you before. Like, like what does you know mean? Is this like a collective consciousness situation is that what he was referring to like everyone just I don't knows know it. like I feel like maybe in the mind of this seven-year-old maybe she did know but to relay it to an adult and have an adult make sense of it probably wouldn't make sense right right like maybe she did know and she was like oh and that's where why they didn't ask any more questions about it okay right? that was the last question well that was the last question about who he was or what he was right 
she was just like, okay. And he was like, you know, and maybe she was like, you're right, I do know. So he begins to tell the kids that there are others like him on earth and that he was scared of humans and he was scared that they might hurt him. And if they tried to hurt him, he admitted that he would not fight back. Oh. I know. So this is where my heart kind of takes a bit of a turn here. So interesting. Back on the other side of that heart, though, now he invites the kids into his hut and they're like, no. cool. No. Oh my. They said yes. Yep. They were like, cool. And he was like, okay, to get in, you got to go in through this small little flap in the side and you got to crawl through. And of course, these kids are like, sure, sounds fun. And they even crawled into this hut um, ahead of him and he was behind them <laughs> crawling through weird yeah but also these kids must have felt a pretty decent amount of comfort to not be scared of something that looks like this and invites them into this creepy thing because i mean seven my my seven-year-old you know like i would not be cool with this oh my god okay so I just, i'm trying to think of how they could have felt comfort well i feel like he's like admitting something right or maybe like telepathically like doing yeah. something there Making like them feel okay calm. you can trust exactly. me yeah Something's okay up. so for anybody curious of what it looked like inside this hut there were two levels the lower level had blue green wallpaper covered in patterns that looked like dials and it also contained a small heater and some simple wooden furniture like a table and chairs or they said resembling table and chairs so maybe it was like rickety and weird but that's whatever and then it had an upper level that wasn't as big as the lower level but the upper level had nothing really in it and it had a metal floor once they were inside this hut it took its hat off and the kids could see that he was balding with a touch of reddish brown hair in front and white rounded ears so Sam confided in the children that he had another camp somewhere else in England, but never disclosed where, and that he survived on berries that he collected and water that he got from the swamp, but would purify before drinking it. He knew how to purify water. Yeah, he never disclosed how he did that either. Although a kid might Probably. be like, a kid wouldn't care to ask, right? Yeah. Now... You ready for this? I don't think you're ready for this part. <laughs> this is freaking weird. Now he did something completely out of this world. And okay, this baffles me. He took a berry and placed it in the hole of his ear. Wait for it. <laughs> I'm waiting. Puts it in the hole of his ear and then lunges his head forward and it disappears inside his ear and pops out his eye socket. <laughs> and then he lunges his head forward again and it goes pew, 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 out in his <laughs> No, no he didn't, no he didn't. So I feel like I didn't have anybody explaining <laughs> that to me, but the wording is insane. He places a berry in his ear and lunges his head forward and the berry disappeared into his ear and popped up the triangular eye socket. Then he thrust his head forward again and the berry rolled around his face and into his mouth and he ate it. <laughs> Who did this stuff? Like this can't be made up. Like where does this come from? What in the world? That is some David Blaine right there. Like what? <laughs> what so like i'm picturing these triangle eyes are like black holes okay right? for it to pop out they've got to be more than just drawn on yeah because I, I was definitely picturing i guess they meant like like drawn on looking almost like with a sharpie colored in because i was definitely picturing like the outline of triangles Same. but now i'm realizing it's not that it's probably solid black and it popped out of this okay this this account was all written up in an article it was published in the British UFO Research Association Journal in 1978. The man who wrote the article, his last name was Oliver, and he theorized that this may have possibly been a test for edibility of the berry. Almost like you put it in, it's checking pH levels and stuff and like, all right, it's safe to eat. That's Almost so like weird. 
And then computer being right. like, yep. And he's like, how? <laughs> right? It's so weird, the whole thing. It is weird. So that was his theory on that. But anyway, um, so the kids stayed in the hut asking Sam questions and getting barely any satisfying answers for about half an hour and then decided, okay, it's time to go. So when they left, they booked it to the golf course and told the first person that they saw that they spoke to a real life ghost, even though he said he wasn't really a ghost kids, right? They're like, he's a ghost. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that his skin was like white tissue paper-ish kind of picturing. The texture is what's gross for me. Yeah. So who they saw first was assumed to be like a golf course maintenance man. Now I can't stress this enough folks. This is why I have to be sensitive to children. Okay. Cause she is seven and this man that she approached laughed at her and made her feel enough embarrassment and shame that she kept the encounter to herself for weeks afterwards before mentioning oh. anything to her dad. So this is why you don't laugh at kids and be a jerk. Or anyone in general. Like, like yeah. if someone I mean, really believes that they've experienced something, just respect that. Even if you don't believe them, at least respect that. You know, yeah. they but believe that they saw that. A kid though, like, so she kept this from her, from anybody for weeks, weeks. So when she finally told her dad, who in this journal was referred to as Mr. Y, I don't know why, Mr. <laughs> y, he brushed it off at first, but then eventually took it seriously because of the great detail he stated that she had about everything that happened. So she brought him back to the area. He checked it out. There was no trace of anything. It's been weeks. Of course not. There was no trace of anything, including the hut that Faye described, which would be odd because considering the size of it that she described and the weight it, and the fact that they were in swampy area, it would have left kind of like a mark in the soft ground, you would think, mm -hmm. but there was no trace. And apparently there was also two men working close to the area on that day that they had found out after all this um, that didn't report anything out of the ordinary that day. Did they hear the noise? Like if the kids heard it from that far away, those people would have heard it. So they were probably they just- thought it was an ambulance. Oh yeah, I mean. Right, if you're working and something sounds vaguely familiar, you'd be like, whatever. But if a kid's like looking for adventure, there it is, Yeah, right? that's true. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I don't have much information on this part, but it was stated that the father of Faye, Mr. Y, had some type of UFO or paranormal encounter as well around the same time. Okay. It was something like he saw eyes, yellow eyes looking at him through a lake or something, lights or something like that. It was really hard to find information on that. So he kind of had a, a weird encounter as well. So this was all published in that UFO Research Association journal in 1978. And I have an artist rendition. Of the picture? Of what okay, this wait. creature. Can I please tell you, when you yeah. were first describing it, and I had my eyes closed and I was really visualizing it, my first thought was, I want to paint this. Okay, dude. I drew it. I'm showing it to you. Oh, now. you're the artist who's, who did Don't... the rendition. No. <laughs> No, I did my own rendition. Oh, I so wanted... did we get to see both? Yes. So yes. before I Googled it, okay, I read the story first. Actually, I heard this on a podcast. It just gripped me. And the reason why I told you at the beginning, if you remember, that this really freaks me out and gives me the willies. For me personally, I don't know, comment down below if this is like true to anybody else out there. But for me personally, it's the stories and the being descriptions that my mind can't process that freak me right out. Because if you Absolutely. it was a ghost that looked like a man, it was a man and a, perfect. I can figure it out. I know what it looks like. But when it's something that like this outlandish, my brain is like, what the heck was this thing? I need to know. Well, think about this. What are some of the scariest horror films a lot, a lot? Yeah. The one where your brain is making up the creature. You don't actually get to see the full formation of the thing they're afraid of. It's all in your head. Those yes. are the best ones. Yes, for sure. So the same type of thing here. Yeah. I'll show you my drawing. Okay. 
Oh, I'm so excited for this. It's brutal. And I'm an artist. Like, I don't want to admit that I... That Jenna I'm is extremely artist. talented. Like, oh, there's a painting about this. her bed and it's beautiful. You can't see the full image, but it's one of my favorite paintings of all time. And she is super... Look at how amazing that is. Okay. Well, you can't really see it quite I well because of the really pixelation. Because it's dark right now. It's but very dark. But she's great. Oh, God, don't judge me on this. I did a quick drawing with my kids pencil crayons so ready this is sam the sand down clown <laughs> oh my god no but you can see like the sorry guys i probably going to tell a scary story right now but now yes. okay, so this was what i pictured i did kind of color in the eyes after i learned that the berry popped out <laughs> i was like oh they're hollow <laughs> Now I'll show you the artist rendition of this in that they published in that journal, okay? So they had an artist draw what Faye described. So I'm gonna share my screen. This was the artist rendition. That is terrifying, right? That is absolutely terrifying, but that is pretty much exactly what I pictured in my head. I find it very interesting that they made his nose electrical sockets. Oh, yeah. Or at least that's what it looks like. Or maybe even like a square pig nose. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they did this for dramatic effect. The downward slanted triangles and the angry looking mouth. I have a very high suspicion that had he looked this scary, the kids probably wouldn't have approached him. You know what it kind of looks like? What? Hang on a second. I just collect creepy looking things. <laughs> Oh, uh, did you imagine seeing that in a swamp? I'm running. <laughs> yeah, but that's what it kind of reminds me of with like the pointy hat yeah. and like the weird clown kind it's of leg. Very, very like jester like. Yes, yes. Mm. Yes. Is there is something scarier about a jester than there is about a clown for whatever reason? Absolutely. Gross. Yeah, we never really thought about that, but yeah, it is. So now I'm going to share with you the artist rendition from that journal of this hut, which is less less amusing, but I'm still going to show it to you. So this is it here. So you can see the little snippet from the journal. At his invitation, the children crawled through the flap into his hut right here, which contained two levels. The lower level had, et cetera, like I explained. They said it was windowless, so I'm not sure what those other two flappy things are. Looks like a lunchbox. <laughs> Could it be an alien spaceship? This was another artist's rendition of him with his little microphone. Oh, yes. His with little the three fingers. Right. And you can see like the slots coming out from under his sleeve. His face is a little less menacing. His unmoving lips. There he be. My it... goodness. I mean, I my, love that. my drawing is not too far off. A little less, um, a little less in every way possible. <laughs> So that is him. Now, theories, which I'll go over a couple of them and then we can expand together. I ran this past Gavin last night just to kind of see what he thought because I was super freaked out. <laughs> and he was just like, what the? the whole time, he's like, this is a person in a mask luring people in. No wonder he couldn't talk. He's speaking from behind a mask. Whoa. Which in one of the articles I read that was somebody else's theory too was it sounds like his maybe he's talking from behind a wooden mask Ugh. but oh my gosh but I didn't even think of that if that was a person uh and they lured these kids into this lunchbox <laughs> nothing happened he didn't do anything remotely weird or at least she didn't say he did I mean weird weird is a I know relative mean, yeah. statement here but you know what I mean threatening Yes. Or, or, you know, yes, yes, really yes. terrifying. So that's what makes me think this wasn't a person. Who's doing this just for fun? Like, I'm going to dress up as this weird, freaky clown that nobody has ever described to anybody ever. And on top of that, how are you getting three toes or three fingers? I could understand squishing, like, you know, into a glove for the hands, but its feet were bare. So yeah. in that one. <laughs> I mean, my first question is, if he has this big hut that's like a double level duplex situation, right? why was he under the bridge? Oh man, I never thought of that. Maybe he was hiding from them. Maybe he saw them coming, but I don't know. Can he see? I don't know what this guy's do, what his deal is, but like it's my weird. thought was, oh, people are coming. 
they'll see my house, they'll come in my house, but if I hide under the bridge, they won't check under here. And then realizing it's kids, like, oh, we're safe. Yeah, that's true. Could have been that. Or I drop my book <laughs> <laughs> under here, I'm going to go get it. And then the kids just happen to be there at the same time. Obviously, other theories are like spaceman. So, I mean, that was the 1973 or 1978 term spaceman <laughs> so i saw the little caption on the bottom yeah. of that drawing ghost or spaceman yeah so those were the other two options ghost or spaceman and i mean i don't think it was a ghost he even no. told them but his whole i sort of am so it makes me think like an interdimensional being which on the podcast that i originally heard this on they were like it almost seems like this guy is, he's something, but he's wearing a costume that resembles something that children like or that people find comforting a clown, right? So maybe it's not a man in a costume, it's something else in a costume. That was actually my theory. Yeah, what was it? What was your theory? Can I say it now? Yes, please. Okay, I wanted to say this the whole time. So what I immediately thought of right away was not ghost at all. It was, what if this was, I was thinking alien, but it could be an interdimensional being that was say wanting to make contact in a gentle way, but they were like studying or like analyzing human behavior from afar. Um, and at some of the gatherings they were observing, especially when he saw or when he felt, sensed that children were coming, he was like, okay, I saw this thing that kids like, that kids are comforted by, so I'm just going to quickly whip this up with things around, like the sticks and stuff. Yeah, just like it was something that they had noticed. Mm -hmm. And now they're applying it to their contact with humans. Right. And like the guys on the podcast were like, it's almost like someone was like, yeah, yeah, two eyes and uh, yeah, like a, like a nose and like, like just kind of like vague, like, oh yeah, that's good. You look good. That's good enough. Right. But especially the behavior, right? Like, like the yeah. bouncing and the, it could have even been children's television that they were observing. Right. So now my thought goes to maybe what, a, so maybe whatever it is, it's like popping this berry in the hole in its mask, right? Trying to get it in wherever its mouth is and it popped out the eye instead. Oh. You know what I mean? Like whatever face it has going on behind this mask is not like our typical face, obviously, or it would just wear its own face and it's doing whatever it's doing to get this berry in its mouth. But also maybe he was underneath the bridge purifying the water to drink it. And maybe his purifier is behind his mask. You know, right. and he purifies it himself before he drinks it. Maybe he puts water in his ear and it pops out his eye and then he drinks it. <laughs> Isn't this weird? This is so interesting. And this is not going to be the last time that I think about this or talk about this. Mm -hmm. Like this really got me. And I appreciate that you made this a whole thing to share it with me. Like you could have just sent me a few links and been done with it. But I appreciate all the work that you went into. Like researching it and really digging into it because this is so freaking cool but yeah. very creepy <laughs> at the same time and confusing so yeah please comment down below if you've ever heard of the sand down clown i want to know because i live for these accounts and i've never in my 33 years heard of this ever and these are the ones that get me. And so like, I yeah. want to know if anybody else has ever heard of this or if anybody else has like information, other information that I missed. Also, if you have any cases or have heard of any weird things similar to this, that we can make more videos like this. Cause I really enjoy researching them and then telling them to you. So if you guys have any ideas, please comment that down below as well. I already have another one in the works to to tell you so I'll have to make that for another time but I was very let down by the interior of his hut <laughs> I was thinking like futuristic alien led strips everywhere <laughs> I think that's what makes it like creepier my brain goes immediately to the fact that maybe not having that stuff visible possibly and having this wooden furniture, rickety wooden furniture that resembles a, a table and chairs is more to convince you. 
Nothing weird's going on here. Even more of that research of what humans like and, and how they live. Yeah. Like, it's all I got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is it. This is how I live. I sit in this chair by the heater and I drink my purified water and eat my berries. Like, what, what a life. <laughs> Does that actually sound nice? <laughs> to be honest, is how I live I right it. now. <laughs> so that's it. That's all we've got. This is the weird story of the Sandown Clown. Please, if you enjoyed watching this video, uh, please make sure to give it a like. We understand the quality is a little bit, but we are sacrificing quality so that you guys can see a video with both of us together still covering a really crazy paranormal topic. Uh, we hope that you guys can see past the potato-esque <laughs> this is. And don't forget to subscribe. Make sure that you click your notification bell so that you get notified every single time that we upload new content. Remember to keep on creeping on and love your life with love and light. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye guys. <laughs>